Welcome back to Galley of the Sun. Today, I'm gonna go over making a leftover brisket beef pot pie. Now, I use a lot of ready-made stuff just to make it a lot easier, a lot faster, it goes together. You can do this on a weeknight, makes it easier. So what I have here is a bag of petite whole onions, a bag of cut green beans, a bag of sliced carrots. I've got my about pound and a half of cubed and kind of like whatever shreds were left in all of the smoked brisket. Again, about a quarter cup or so of uh, minced garlic, cause you know, garlic. I do have an egg already beaten for an egg wash for the top. Now Greg did an injection on his brisket and he had injection left over. So we're gonna use this injection to help build our gravy base. Now the other thing that I like to do with this is add some Guinness. So we'll be adding about a cup of Guinness to this too. I also have about a quarter cup of flour here and I also have some cornstarch in case I need to thicken it a little bit more than what the flour will do. In here, I have a mix of seasonings. I put some onion powder in here because I kind of like the taste of onion and garlic together. About a teaspoon of tarragon, thyme, marjoram, savory, and about two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. I like to really season my stuff really well so that I don't have to use a lot of salt or pepper, um, but we will taste it just to see if we do need to use any salt or pepper. I've got some olive oil here because we do need some of those fats in there to mix with the flour and the liquids to make that gravy base. So I also have ready-made pie crust and ready-made puff pastry crust. Now, the reason why I have both of those is because half of my family likes the pie crust top. The other half likes the pastry crust top. So we just make everybody's favorite. But I'll be doing everything in one pan and then just transferring it over. Now you notice that I'm using cast irons. I like to use cast iron for this because it just stays hot and gets everything nice and bubbly and going when we put it in the oven. I've got the oven preheating to 400 and I think we're just ready to get going on this. So I'm gonna turn on my stove, get that at about medium. We're gonna throw some oil in there. What I like to do first is just open up the onions and the carrots and saute those a little bit, let them thaw out a little bit in there. And it's okay that the oil's not heated up all the way yet. And don't cut these or anything, I just leave them whole. We'll throw the green beans in there too. I just put this pan here because it was a convenient place to set everything. Now, if you wanna add mushrooms to this, you can add mushrooms. Um, traditionally, instead of green beans, you would use peas, but if I put peas in it, Mike might dump it over my head. Then that is the nice thing about pot pie. You can use what's in your freezer. You can use what's kind of left over in your refrigerator and make a new meal of it. I'm just gonna dry my hands off from those being damp. And we are gonna just kinda of get that around a little bit, let them cook, cook down a little bit, heat through. I know we're gonna be heating through everything on this, but, and if I made a little bit too much anyway, that is okay. We can put it in the other pot and split the, the stuff. That's the nice thing about this. So we're actually gonna have leftovers out of our leftovers, but that's kind of the way we like it. And I actually think I may have to split this some, but we'll see how this goes. Cause as it cooks down, it does release some of its liquid. So hopefully by the time the director gets home, this will all be done and she'll be able to have a fresh hot meal again. Now, if you don't have brisket injection like this, just use beef broth. And like I said, this is about two and a half cups, maybe three. Now all of the ingredients in the recipe will be down in the comments. And while I'm thinking about it, we're gonna go ahead and open up this Guinness. Now, if you don't have a big pan like this or you don't have a cast iron skillet, that's okay. You can start this in like a big skillet or a big pot like the Dutch oven. If you've got an oven proof Dutch oven, you can do it in that. You know, a lot of people have that enameled cast iron Dutch ovens, use that. It's just whatever you're gonna put this into, cause you don't have to leave it in here. We're just gonna start the base off in here. You wanna make sure that can go in the oven and it's gonna hold everything. See, I'm just breaking up some of the stuff that got frozen together, really all the carrots. 
Now I plan on only using about a cup of this Guinness. We can use more or all of the bottle of Guinness. If you like more flavor, just remember you're probably gonna have to add more flour and cornstarch to get it to thicken properly. Okay, now it looks pretty good there. We're gonna add in our brisket. And as you can see, some of it's in chunks, some of it's in shreddy pieces. It's all gonna kind of break up. If there's bigger pieces in here, like I kind of see, I'm gonna just grab my scissors here and just cut those up a little bit more. And the great thing about using this leftover brisket, besides the fact that you're using leftovers in a new way, is the, the flavor, just the most wonderful, tender, smoky flavor. And it's already cooked, you don't have to worry about it, so you can do this on a weeknight. Okay, one of the things that I do wanna do here is I wanna make sure I've got plenty of fat in this for the flour mixture to hold to. So I'm just adding probably a good quarter to a third cup of olive oil in there. Now you can use vegetable oil or, you know, another kind of um, oil. I haven't tried it with a flavored oil, but my guess is if, if you really wanted to do that, you could do that too. It's just we need that to help bind the flour and liquids into that gravy mixture. Now I'm also gonna toss in the garlic because we cannot forget garlic. And I will put the rest of the seasonings in when I add the liquid. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add about a quarter cup of flour to this, kind of help this get into kind of a roux right here. And like I said, we may have to use some cornstarch in this to help thicken it too, but I kind of want to get this coated and it'll help the liquid when I add the liquid here in just a moment. So we're gonna add all of this, about two and a half to three cups of brisket injection. It just smells so good. It's a mixture of like au jus and beef broth. So good. Nice, hearty, beefy taste here. Now you don't want this to be soupy because you want it to be thick. And then we're gonna add in the Guinness and the Guinness is gonna give it a great brisket and ale taste. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the whole bottle because well, you know, why not? We like that taste. Now I'm gonna let this cook down for a little bit and I'm gonna go wash things over here while this cooks down a little bit and see how that thickens up. And we may end up having to add some cornstarch. Let's go ahead and add those seasonings in here real quick because I almost forgot. Now you're able to, you know, change up these seasonings however you like. I tend to, when I cook, I don't really measure a whole lot and I go by what the seasoning smells like and what it, I think it's gonna taste like with this. And pretty much I hit it out of the ballpark, so. You can use my seasoning mix, you can use your own, how you like it flavored. Maybe you don't like something that I put in here. Um, I know the director doesn't like rosemary. So I'm gonna let this boil up and simmer here, see how that thickens while I go do some dishes. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is cooking down some. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to add, I think, some cornstarch into this. So I've got a dish and a spoon because when you do cornstarch, you like to take some of the liquid out of this and put it in here and then put the cornstarch in it and kind of make a slurry. And you can see those wonderful herbs in there. So we're just gonna take the cornstarch. And I think I'm gonna use about a quarter cup of cornstarch. Take my spoon here. Get that mixed up, make that slurry. Get the lumps out of it so we don't have lumps. If you got a little tiny whisk, you could use a little whisk on this. A fork could work too. See, so you can see that the lumps are pretty much out of it. It's a nice slurry. We're just gonna pour that over the top. So we're not adding any more liquid because we took the liquid out. And then we're just gonna give it a good stir here. Turn that down a little bit so it'll simmer and thicken. And you can already see it's starting to thicken up, which is exactly what we were after. 
I'm just going to take the spoon and test the liquid part of it real quick. See if I can get some of that slurry off of there that left. Just so that I make sure I have enough salt and pepper in it. Don't need to add any salt or pepper. This is actually really good, just like that. So I am going to let this cook down here and just kind of thicken up a little bit for about another five minutes or so. We'll go wash this other stuff. Now that my paws are washed too, we're all good to go here. We're just going to let that thicken just a little bit more. So this looks like it's thickening up nicely. So I'm just going to turn this off and then we're going to transfer half of it into this other pan. You know, while you're getting this, you want to just make sure you're scraping the bottom of this a little bit. One more scoop. We'll put it over here. So that's about half by eyeballing it. So that's not bad. So like I said, I use ready-made pie crust. If you have a uh, 10 inch skillet like this, you know, for a cast iron, it goes right on top and you can just put it down here. Now, my family happens to like a little bit thicker pie crust and since it's a weeknight and we don't want to bother with having to make our own pie crust and then put it in the fridge and let it hard so you can roll it out. Yeah, ready-made all the way. Plus, most of the ready-mades are actually really pretty good. Now I just put a little bit of egg wash down and then I'm going to put the other pie crust down. Like I said, my family likes a little bit thicker crust. If your family likes a little bit thinner crust, just use one. But I'm going to use two here. The egg wash helps them hold together. And then, as you can probably see, I'm just kind of turning the edges over and kind of making just a little rustic little fold here. And then on this one, we're going to put the puff pastry crust. Reason why I chose the rectangle pan for the puff pastry crust is because puff pastry crust comes out as a rectangle. If you've never used it, it's really nice to use. And you just lay it right on top like that. Again, we're just going to kind of tuck the edges, maybe fold the little corners down a little bit, fold the sides down just a little bit. And again, we're going to egg wash that. Now you don't have to use the whole egg. It's fine if you don't. You just need it like on the top a little bit. All right, that takes care of that. Now, we're gonna get them into the oven for about 20 minutes. Definitely wear something on your paws if you're doing these in cast iron or if you've cooked on the stove in it because you don't wanna burn your paws. All right, we're gonna let that go and I'll see y'all back here in about 20 minutes. All right, so we're back. The baking is all done and I've let them cool for about 10 minutes because yeah, you don't need it lava hot. You need to be able to taste for the next week. What we found with doing it at both at the same time is that the crust cooks a little faster, cooked in about 20 minutes. The pie crust took about an extra five, 10 minutes. But then again, we took them both out. We let them cool for about 10 minutes because, yeah, we definitely do not want lava hot. And you can see they're beautiful and they're nice and they're thick and they've got pot pie scooped out a little bit. So I'm going to ask Mike to come in here since he wants the puff pastry one and do a taste test on the puff pastry. And I will taste the pie crust one. Ooh. Get a little bit of everything in there. There's no peas in this, right? No, okay. no peas. Fantastic. A very yeah. incredible home for leftover brisket. Or any of the leftovers you may have in your fridge if you don't want to use the vegetables we used. Although, oh, makes a wonderful one. And again, I think doubling up the pie crust really makes a huge difference because you got that nice thick. Now, if you want to make your own and throw a nice thick of pie crust of your own on there, go right ahead. Same with the puff pastry. But again, for time, I say use the store bought. Because I think all in all this took together maybe about an hour to put everything together from beginning to end, including the baking and the cooling time. So if you like what you've seen here today, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and we'll see you next time on Galley of the Sun. Bye. Fair winds and following seas.